you hear me? Yeah. No. Okay. So four years ago, a conflict, a conflict began in Syria that would tear the nation apart. And today it's still going on and it's only getting worse with the threat of ISIS. And the United States faces a few options of uh, different types of actions we can take in order to resolve the situation there. Uh, first, we can aid the rebels, uh, or what many people call them the FSA or the opposition, um, or we can decide to take a step back and not do anything and see what happens uh, after uh, if the, and see if the situation resolves itself, or we could help the Assad regime. And the situation now and all the events occurring, yeah. And all the events occurring now show that the Assad regime is the best pathway to peace in Syria. Um, so many, many people will usually discard this fact that we should help Assad and tend to go straight to the rebels. But what many people don't realize is that the rebels are per perhaps exactly like ISIS in many ways. They behead people. They torture uh, loyalists to the regime, and they and, and they just uh, and they and they murder a lot of uh, civilians as well. They impose when they invade villages and conquer them. They impose strict law, and they and they take all the food from themselves, and which results in high unpopularity for the rebels. Which is why the which is why NATO con actually conducted a poll showing that. Only 10% of the rebels, of, of the Syrian, of the Syrian people, actually support the rebels. And uh, when I went there myself this summer, and when I was there, the FSA was outside of Damascus. And what they were doing was, was, and they were launching propane tanks and bombs into the city, killing people every single day. That's not what. Are, that's not a freedom movement. Those are murderers. Um, and many people think that the Syrian army. Uh, if they give the Syrian army a bad image, and the media here tends to say a lot of bad things about them. But when in reality, they're actually the most pluralistic state, meaning that they're the most inclusive army in the Middle East, and they remain the most effective and the largest army within the Middle East. And that's why they are the, they're the best option to go uh, to for peace in Syria. Um, since Ever since the conflict has started, we, um, the Syrian army has been able. The Syrian army has been able to take back many um, cities that were once held by rebels, and the notorious city called Homs uh, was actually the so-called uh, rebellion hub, and that in the and the Syrian government was able to take it back. And there were people in the streets cheering on the Syrian army as they were, as they were entering the city liberating it from the rebels. Um, and um, the, I, when I was there, uh, I was talking to a Syrian soldier. And he told me a story that didn't match what the West, what Western media talks about. He saw, he, he saw a child on, um, he saw a child on the Lebanese border, on the Lebanese border that was rejected, but his parents were let in and he was left behind. And the Syrian soldier, drove all the way to Damascus, and then went all the way back to the border. And if that's, if that's your definition of cruelty, then you should really look at the dictionary. Um, and, and Bashar al-Assad, now he's, now the most, the, red, the so-called red line that was drawn by the United States was when, uh, was when the use of chemical weapons occurred. And many people pointed their fingers at Assad when in reality, there's actually evidence that proves he did not use those chemicals. Um, Seymour M. Hirsch, who worked for the British Intelligence Agency, was actually able to acquire a, a sample from, uh, from the site where the sarin gas was used, and it did not match any of the sarin gas that was within the Syrian arsenal. So therefore, it came from outside the country. And, um, and the, U, the United Nations themselves, a, U, a United Nations correspondent said that the, it seemed that the rebels did the, uh, conducted the attack, not the government. So, and while the United States and many European countries are saying they have evidence, they haven't really presented that evidence to the United Nations or have made it public. 
And the, the evidence here strongly suggests that uh, Assad didn't uh, use his chemical attacks. So supporting the rebels is like supporting terrorists because what they're doing is, uh, is violations against human rights. Now, Bashar al-Assad has, pr has pr probably committed a few crimes himself. But then again, is there such thing as a clean war? When was the last time there was a clean war where everyone played by the rules? Some, there, are, there are some things that happen within the war that we cannot control. Um, and, the, and another thing with the FSA, they, there, was a, there was a rebel commander who reported 1,000 of his soldiers defect to ISIS. Now, putting weapons into their hands is putting weapons into ISIS, into ISIS's hands. And I strongly suggest that we support Assad if we want peace in Syria. To the FSA. Now, I guess beheadings are in violation of human rights. I guess killing civilians isn't a violation of human rights, right? And the fact that the, the people of Damascus are rich, I saw half the people there are poor. There are people on the streets coming from Aleppo who don't have money, children who don't have families, children who, look at, who lost everything. That the Assad regime does not give money to the civilians because they are using that money to fight the terrorists. Um, now you said, let's look at history. And in fact, support, not supporting Assad would put us on the losing side of history. Let's look at Iraq. We supported a regime change in there. What's happening now? We're seeing ISIS coming in and completely destroying the Iraqi government forces. <coughs> Afghanistan, President Obama just approved a, long, a, long, a prolonged conflict and, he sent, and he's sending more troops. Libya, many people believe that it was a success, but do you ever hear about it now? No. Why is that? It's because that, that government has been taken over by extremists and and if we choose to help rebels and regime change and decide to stand by as ISIS gains power, we will see the same thing happen in Syria. We will lose another country, and we cannot afford that. Um, and you said that supporting Assad will make us not American. But somehow supporting the FSA would make us American, even though I mentioned that half a battalion of the FSA went to ISIS. Why do we want to support terrorists? We're trying to defeat ISIS, not fuel their rage. Um, and al-Assad has proved that he wants to work with us. He's, he, he's instituted reforms. He has handed his entire chemical arsenal to the United Nations. Um, and let's look at before the Civil War. You said that he, he's always hated us. Did you hear any, did you, have you ever heard any stories before the Civil War? No. Did you hear about any conflicts going on there? No. So what seems to be the problem? It's because the terrorists are coming in and they want to, and they want to take over another country and we're falling for it again. Now, you, you keep mentioning evidence, but you've never mentioned one, one piece of evidence today. You said, oh, I have all this evidence, but you never, you've never mentioned one thing. And you've neglected the fact that I've proved that Assad did not use, excuse me, I'm talking, did not use chemical weapons. Um, now, we, we see videos, right? But where else did we see videos? In Iraq. And what happened to the weapons of mass destruction? We never found them. And if we, if we want to continue to be brainwashed by Western media, then we need to wake up because the Assad regime is the only path to security in Syria. Thank you.